Hi YouTube, welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the kinds of commissions that amateur artists never really seem to take. Usually you'll see a couple things on their will not draw list. Totally been there, I'm not trying to like say that anybody needs to take these off, but I know as a beginner artist the reasons why those things were on my list is because I didn't think I could draw them. Three things I usually see are no mechas, no furries, and no not safe for work art. I'm not going to talk about not safe for work art because I totally understand why people don't want to do that, but as far as mechas and furries go, um, I think it's not as hard as we all make it out to be. As a beginner artist, I know I really wanted to know how to draw furries and I just didn't. And nowadays I think I would do a better job, but I don't know because I haven't really drawn furries. So today is that. A lot of people don't like furries and I think <laughs> I'm here to say that you're wrong. Furries are great. Especially because the furry community, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like people that are in the furry community, which is such a broad spectrum of hatred that's just like crazy to me. Like, I get that there's some people in those communities that are weird, but like, at the base, it's just like, oh, we like, you know, people that look like animals. Like, yeah, so does everyone. <laughs> Freaking cute. <laughs> like, who can honestly say that as a kid you didn't think, like, Balto was like, awesome. If you say no, then you're a liar because Balto is awesome. <laughs> furries are great and you're all wrong <laughs> if you don't like furries. I, as a kid, I know I've talked already about how much I loved Neopets. So relevant because I would always get like um, disqualified from the beauty contest, which was like this little art contest where you drew your Neopet and they would be like, you just drew a human with like colored skin. Like that ain't that ain't anthro, that ain't like a neopet. I'm gonna just like recolor a human and be like, this is a furry. Like that's not, that's not how it works. So um, I just, I didn't know like how to even begin, which is kind of bizarre to my brain now because I feel like I'm going to have a better grasp of it. So maybe I can enlighten you, maybe not. I don't know because I'm not really a furry artist and I don't claim to be. But I, <laughs> I think it's a really, it's a shame to just kind of say like, oh, I can't draw that. So like, no, because I think that you can. I totally think you can draw it. One of the things I admire the most about the furry community is that they seem to really value their artists. They seem to really pay better than just people that get kind of like their regular anime OCs. I see a lot of people tipping really well. Um, I mean, they really are willing to put monetary value into artwork, which is something that a lot of communities lack. A lot of people that are taking these like, you know, chibi commissions and stuff like that are not making even minimum wage for their state probably, uh, which is such a shame because they already put so much time and talent and all this stuff into making art and that should be valued. If you want to keep enjoying art, you have to support artists monetarily. Unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. We need money to live. Well, without further ado, let's see what I can do. So I believe the basis of pretty much learning how to draw any kind of character, any body type, any design, um, stylizing it, all these different things, at the base of all of these is just a base. <laughs> it's pretty simple, but everything is made up of 3D shapes. And when you're drawing, Basically what you're trying to do is convey something that is tangible onto a 2D space. Let's say you love anime drawing humans, you know? <laughs> what you're always starting with is simple shapes. You got your circular head. And you might not think of things this way right now. I mean, you might just go right in and, and draw your anime faces and that's how you think of stuff. but. Even if you do it that way, you might not realize it, but you are working with these three-dimensional shapes. You're just not quite grasping the full element of it. So the same thing is very true for drawing things like animals. It's just a process of learning what animal has what shape. So, you know, you do your commissions and most of them are like this and you're like, well, 
yeah, I don't really know how to make this into an animal. Like, you know, I draw the right things, like an animal will little nose or, or a little like kitty mouth or whatever but it still just looks like a person with you know animal features not really something that's anthropomorphized um so i mean it does vary on what animal you're trying to draw and one thing to keep in mind is definitely use reference reference is your friend and i'm certainly going to use it because i don't really know what i'm doing so let's say dogs. Dogs are extremely popular. There's so many different kinds and you can notice a lot even in just studying the shapes of these dogs. Like the proportions of what kind of dog is this? I don't know. Whatever this is, is obviously going to be quite different than, you know, this retriever's proportions. And that gives it that particular look. But um, let's see if I can break it down. Like, okay, let's see uh, Boo, this sweet little baby. Oh my goodness. Of course has this big head, little tiny other protruding part. Let's, let's work in circles because that'll be easy. And then you know these little ears up here. That means that the eyes are going to be way down here, and it gives it this really cute look because it has these proportions. Well, all dogs are cute, actually, but that's how it becomes easy to think about it. If you can think in, basically everything can be broken down in cubes or circles that are just interacting with each other and giving them these different looks. So, let's say a Goldie. Oh my goodness, so sweet. Of course, has circle here. Let's say kind of the main base of the skull. And then snout, whatever, muzzle. <laughs> we got other nose right here. Other nose, yeah, as opposed to the, <laughs> the other one I drew, I guess. <laughs> and it's not perfect but you do have the beginnings of what dogs look like. Now, all of this can be applied to your style really easily. If you can break down that your style is just made of circles, then it's just a matter of figuring out what additional shapes needed are needed to create your style into something that has animal features. Typically, when I draw a commission, I draw a human head like this. Then our skull goes back a little bit farther for the neck. Okay. Human head. Basically, big skull. Here's the face area. I can kind of appropriately place, you know, nose, eyes. This is extremely rough but it will give you an idea of where things go on a human. So when I'm doing that with an animal, I guess originally I would think, well, an animal, let's say a Goldie, has, we just learned this basic skull shape and then we have this long nuzzle, nuzzle, <laughs> muzzle coming out. And you know, it's not a true science, but it does look like a dog. So if you can combine these two features, that's when you start to get these animal characters. So let's say I have this human face, but I'll give it this kind of dog nose. It looks like a duck bill. <laughs> But if I can think about what parts I want to look more human and what will be more animal-like, I can begin to create characters that are a hybridization of these two elements. So really, in theory, it shouldn't be too hard. 
getting it right, of course, is another matter, but it does create a solid base. So let's say cats then. I'll evaluate them too in a different way. It's kind of a similar principle, but like, let's say they don't really have muzzles. So how do I apply this kind of cat look to make it anthropomorphized? <laughs> so I can look at this cat, see like, okay, it has a little circular face, you know, it's all kind of bunched up right in here. Of course, I'm not going to draw a human this way because it wouldn't make no dang sense. But as I study what makes this cat look like a cat, it's a little protruding mouth, it's angular eyes, even the round head shape to an extent is all part of how we can apply these features to a human. So typically, you know, we'll go at it again. Start with a base. The circle, we're creating a, you know, general idea of where everything is going to be. You know, the eyes will be here, but I'll make them a little more cat-like because, you know, it's a cat. And then her little mouth will come out a little farther. And we have this nice little kitty mouth shape, which of course we can do anything we want with. We'll make her face a little round. Now I'm not really going by the guides at this point, but we can pretend I am. That's really all it is. It's just shapes in different ways, hybridizing between what is human and what is you know, the animal. And you can get really expressive with that. One of the great things about furry art, I feel like, is that animals themselves are very expressive in some ways. I think when you're doing this style, it's really easy to take the best parts of what you like about animals and just apply it to kind of this cartoony fun style. Like, let's look at this guy. I think I can apply even these similar principles to this. Like, okay, my human skull is going to be looking this way. So I will have my kind of cat-like human eyes. Kind of an interesting in-between point. Oh god, <laughs> he's making such a silly face. So how can we apply these things to creating commissions? I don't think it's really that hard. Um, it's really a matter of, of course, you find your reference, people will send it to you, and usually they're pretty easy to identify, like, what kind of animal they are, and if not, you know, they're usually a basic kind of thing, like cats or dogs or foxes, wolves, all this kind of stuff. And it's really just a matter of breaking down what the animal has, the shapes that are specific to that kind of animal, and how to apply it to a character in an attractive way. And it shouldn't be too hard, I think, to take your own style and just apply it to these shapes, because that's really all you're doing. You're taking the parts that make it look like an animal, and then you're applying your own kind of twist on it to make it, you know, attractive in your own way, and that's why people want to commission you. Of course, not everybody is going to, you know, want to commission you for furry art, but hey, if they ever did, you'd be like, heck yeah, I got this because it's really not as hard as I think who we think it is. Now I'm going to go make a fursona. <laughs> so here's my tips, I guess. Just go and try and doodle the animal real quick before you start. Just pay attention to some of the features that you know, make sense for what are defining to whatever kind of animal you're working with. And then just apply it to the base that you have for humans. 
Of course, this is made so much easier when you are thinking about your human faces also in terms of 3D shapes and just putting them together and how that all works. And it does take time to get used to that kind of thing. But once you have that down, it's really the fundamentals that are so much, you know, it just makes it easy to apply to anything, just like furry art. Well, heck, hope you learned something. I still have commissions open. If you want to commission me for some good, good furry art, please do. <laughs> Apparently I can do it okay. Who to thunk it? Bye guys. Thanks for watching and have a good one. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know if a possum is really me. I don't know. Uh, oh dear god. I don't want to be any of these things. Uh, probably this one. I'm a cat. Man, that's some basic bullshit.